Once again, a warm welcome to you to join me in this series, Surgery for Undergraduates. Today's topic for discussion is fistula in ano, or commonly called perianal fistula. In this short lecture, I shall try to touch on the causes, the pathogenesis, and the basic treatment of this condition that is, affects so many adult patients in our country. What is the definition of perianal fistula? A perianal fistula, also known as fistula in ano, refers to an abnormal connection between the anal canal and the perianal skin. Okay, in short, it means it's an anal fistula is a tunnel that runs from the inside of the anal canal and rectum to somewhere in the skin around the anus. So here, this is a diagram to show you this is the anal canal, okay, and the tunnel or the passages, abnormal connection of passages that communicate between the anal canal and the perianal skin. So this is known as a peri a fistula in anal or perianal fistula. The majority of perianal fistula are associated with anorectal abscess formation. In fact, one third of patients with anorectal abscess have an associated perianal fistula at the time of presentation. So, there is a relationship between anal fistula and perianal abscess. Okay? A fistula can give rise to an abscess. At the same time, an abscess is also the cause of a fistula. Okay? In short, what is a fistula in anal? It is an abnormal communication between the anus and the perianal skin, which may or may not be associated with an abscess. Okay, so this is a perianal fistula here. It may abnormal communication between the anal canal and the perianal skin. Okay, it may or may not be associated with an abscess. The, come to the etiology of perianal fistula. Formation of a perianal fistula typically occurs as a consequence of a perianal abscess. And over 90% of these abscesses are secondary to a perianal fistula. However, apart from perianal abscess, the other risk factors for the formation of perianal fistula are inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, systemic diseases such as tuberculosis, diabetes, HIV, history of trauma to the anal region or the perineal region leading to fistula in anal, and an important cause is previous radiation therapy to the anal region, especially for a carcinoma of the rectum or carcinoma of the anal canal. This slide shows you the, the role of the perianal abscess in the formation of the perianal fistula. Okay, as I told in my last lecture, the perianal abscesses begin at the intersphincter region in this plane here. This is the internal sphincter, this is the external sphincter. In between the anal glands, the ducts get blocked and therefore there's infection in the form perianal abscesses. Uh, perianal gland infection due to the blockage of ducts lead to perianal abscess. And this perianal abscess, by draining into the various parts of the perianal skin, they form a fistula. Okay? The various types of fistula created depends on the site of the location of the perianal abscesses. Okay, this slide shows you the relationship between the various perianal abscesses to the various types of perianal fistula tracts that are formed. Okay, the first one is so, uh, abscess is the supralevator. This is the most common. This is the interspinteric, ischiorectal, and superficial perianal abscesses. When they drain into the various part of the skin, they give you the various types of fistulas among which the first one is your intersphincteric fistula here between the two muscles two in sphincters two is your transphincteric fistula 
okay, transfinteric goes through the finter to join that. Okay, this is your transfinteric fistula. And then the third one is your suprasphinteric fistula. Okay, this goes up here above the suprasphinteric and drains into the fistula. Okay, so this is a suprasphinteric fistula. And the last is the extra spintery, okay, from the skin, cutaneous location. It goes far above the levators, supra levator, okay, extra spintery, stula. This slide shows you the PAX classification of perianal fistula, okay. It is the popular classification that is used by surgeons. And uh, to describe the various types of fistulas that are seen in our patients. There are four main types. Huh? Okay, the first is the, the most common is the intersphinteric fistula. Okay, intersphinteric fistula. So which goes between the two sphincters, external and internal sphincters, and then to communicate with the anal canal here. Okay, this is the intersphinteric. The least common is the suprasphinteric fistula okay and this is your this is your suprasphinteric fistula okay it opens at the perineal perineum here then it goes up traverses the external sphincter and then goes to join and 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 join the you know canal this, this is a suprasphinteric sphincter which is the least common the other one is your submucosal okay submucosal Fistula and transphinteric spitula, okay, and also the extrafinteric spitula, okay, which opens at the very near, very inner region, right into the rectum here. This is a very high type, huh? that's the extrasphinteric. You will notice here the the external orifice of this fistula are differs from the anal margin. The further it is away, the higher the sphincter fistula is. So this is an important consideration to take into when you examine the patient, the distance of the fistula opening in the very anal region. Okay, classifications for clinical purposes can also be described as low types of fistula and this open into the canal below the internal sphincter, the high level fistula which open above the internal sphincter. Right? It can also be classified as simple fistula without extensions or complex fistula with extensions, multiple extensions. It can have a single opening or you can have multiple opening and these multiple openings are considered complex fistula and they usually occur in secondary to tuberculosis, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease. Now we come to the clinical presentation of perianal fistula. The three most common symptoms are pain, redness, and swelling around the anus. Then they can have uh, bleeding PR from the uh, fistula especially if it is infected or traumatized. You can have painful bowel movements or urination. There can be fever if there is secondary infection and there's foul smelling liquid oozing from the opening or the hole around the anus. On examination, one or more external openings may be seen on the perineum around the very you know, region. Normally, it can be fully open or covered with the granulation tissue, hiding its opening. A fibrous tract may be felt underneath the skin on digital examination. So the importance of doing a very careful digital examination of the rectum. In general, anal fistula usually present with either recurrent perianal abscesses or intermittent or continuous discharge into the perineum 
including mucus, blood, pus, or feces. Okay, these are some of the pictures showing you a fistula in anal here. This is the anus. Okay, this is quite a distance away from the anal margin. And these fistulas are usually the high type. The superficial one tend to be at the opening closer to the anal verge. Okay, here, anal is here, fistula here. Huh? Compared to this, this is much closer. Okay, here, looks, this looks like a superficial fistula, intersintery or superficial fistula with the opening here and the anus here. Another opening of the fistula here, where the patient often has discharge of pus and blood, and it is quite close to the anal margin. The Gottsall rule is another important rule that is used in describing or dealing with fistula in anal. This rule uses the location of the external fistula opening to predict the trajectory or the path of a fistula tract from the anal mucosa. There are two situations. When first the external opening is anterior to a transverse line across the in transverse line across the anus. Okay, the picture here shows you this transverse line which passes from the three o'clock position to the nine o'clock position. The anus is located here. Any opening anterior to this line, okay, here, the fistula tract will follow a straight radial course to the dentate line from here straight down, okay, perpendicular line. Okay, so these are usually simple, uncomplicated fistulae. When the external opening is posterior to the transverse area line, in this case, the fistula tract will follow a curved course to the posterior midline before joining the other tracts from probably from the contralateral area to enter into the midline, posterior midline of the anal canal. There can be some exceptions where there can be long anterior fistula communicating with these posterior ones, which are less common. Now we come to the investigations for fistula in anal. In the vast majority of cases, the careful rectal examination, digital rectal examination and proctoscopy are all that is needed. Okay, But in some cases, if it is complex, then you may have to do the digital examination under anesthesia, UEA. Proctoscopy can be used to visualize the opening of the tract in the anal canal. So combined with digital examination, we should be able to palpate and visualize the opening of the fistula tract internally into the anal canal. At times, sigmoidoscopy or even colonoscopy may be needed, especially if it is a complex fistula with chronic infection and recurrence and also suggesting inflammatory bowel disease, cancer, or even tuberculosis. Okay, and for these cases, you may even want to do a sigmoidoscopy followed by even MRI imaging, which will be able to visualize the anatomy of the tract for complex fistula, high fistula, and chronic or secondary to some form of chronic diseases. Okay, this is a normal MRI image of a anorectal region. This is the rectum. Okay. This is the external sphincter. This is the ischiorectal fossa, internal sphincter, and the anal canal. Okay, this is a normal image. Here it shows uh, fistula in anal here, superficial inter sphincteric fistula in anal. This is the anal canal. Okay, here this is a coronal view shows, showing you an inter sphincteric sphincter abscess, inter sphincteric uh, fistula communicating with the anal canal. 
Again, this is a MRI fistulogram after injection of diluted contrast through the external opening in a female patient with history of birth injury demonstrating a hyper intense intersphinteric fistula on the left side. Okay, in this case, a, you can see here the horseshoe type of fistulogram picture suggesting in, in, in keeping it good source law there is a posterior extension of the fistula. Okay, here, okay, this is there, it's a posterior extension of the fistula. Here, this is a, another picture showing you as intersphinteric fistula of the same patient, okay, intersphinteric. This is a coronal view. Okay, now we come to the management of very anal fistula. The definitive management for an anal fistula depends largely on the cause and site of the fistula and also whether it is high or low type of fistula and also the classification of the fistula. If the patient has got no symptoms, then a conservative approach may be used. If the patient is symptomatic or there's a recurrent attacks of abscess and uh, ill health for the patient, then surgical treatment may be indicated. And among the critical uh, treatment, fistulotomy is the most widely used, especially for superficial disease. It involves the laying the tract open by cutting through the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and allow the wound to heal by secondary intervention. And then continue with wound dressing for some time until the wound heals by secondary intervention. In complicated cases or patients with a high fistula, the tract is high, then placement of a suture seton, known as seton, is suitable. Through the fistula, it is inserted through the fistula and in an attempt to bring together and close the tract, passing out at the opening of the perianal skin adjacent to the external opening. It is quite common for patients with complex anal fistulas to require several repeated procedures over subsequent months. Must understand that fistula is a chronic problem which with a notoriously high incidence of recurrence. So these are the overall uh, is a list of the commonly available treatment for fistula in anal. Fistulectomy, which is most commonly typed for anal fistulas, especially superficial fistulas, deeper fistulas, the sit-on technique, the loose technique, and the cutting sit-on techniques. Flat, advancement flat procedures, sometimes high fistulas, the, the, the fear of injuring or cutting through the sphincter is high. These wounds are not excise so a flap is done adjacent flap but the problem is the recurrence rate of the fistulas is quite high next is the lift procedure and now the latest new techniques is the endoscopic ablation in which a scope known as the fistuloscope is inserted to look into the fistula and the thermal ablation of the fistula is done At times, laser surgery is becoming also being tried, an external laser surgery to obliterate the fistula. Fibrin glues used to pluck the fistula and seal the fistula. And now, bioprosthetic plugs, okay, from tissues from non-human tissues are taken to pluck this prosthetic plug, hoping to stop it and enhance the healing of the fistula. 
Having said all this, there are no one method that is ideal and most people believe that whatever techniques that you use, the recurrence is still high. Okay, the final outcome is still the same. Okay, this is a summary of the surgical treatment options. Conventional approach will be cutting sit-on placement, staged fistulotomy, and anorectal advancement flaps. And lately, these things have less invasive procedures have come in. Use of a fibrant glue, inner plug, fistula plug, the ligation of intersympteric fistula tract or lift procedure, which I mentioned just now, where the opening and exit of this tract are ligated so as to block off the inter uh, the intersphinteric fistula tract. And of latest is the video assisted anal fistula treatment or waft treatment. This is using a video uh, fistulo fistuloscope inserted into the video to see, visualize the tract and use ablation to thermal ablation to obliterate the tract. Go through some of the common operations that are done for fistula in you know. Okay, the surgical options and the most commonest and the easiest is the fistulotomy, that is excising, excising the fistula tract from outside. This is the fistula, a probe is passed, eh? a probe passed to identify the tract. Okay, then the, also the extent of the sphincter is involved, is assessed by here doing a digital examination. And the tract and the muscle are divided. And the secondary tract that is, that is visible is then made to heal by secondary intention. So this is a fistulotomy, laying open a fistula tract and allowing it to heal by itself. This is the uh, next option. This is fistulectomy, excision of the fistula. Okay, and sometimes you may have to put a draining seat on at the same time. You core out the tract and completely excise it under direct visualization. And in this process, you try to remove all the secondary tracts as well. And then try to preserve the sphincter, or if it is unable, then you may have to repair the sphincter with an advancement flap. Okay, next we come to Citon. Okay, the use of Citon in fistula and anal. Citon is a suture that is placed in the tract. This is the fistula tract. It is passed through the opening of the uh, tract into the tract and come out again through the anus. And then these Citons are outside tied externally. These Citons produce an inflammatory reaction that causes fibrosis of this tract. But in this healing process, it also helps you to drain whatever infection that is coming so that the tract is then fibrous and healed off without infection, thereby sealing the tract. Okay, these are two cases. This is, uh, there are two types of cetons, draining and cutting. The draining cetons are tied loosely. Their, their purpose is to drain up whatever infection or pus that is being collected inside through these symptoms. Whereas the tightening or cutting is the one is applied uh, tightly against the very inner wall. As a result, the sutures slowly cut into the cut and heal the superficial sphincter muscles as well. So this is the cutting seton and this is the draining seton. The next one is a uh, lift operation, uh, L-I-F-T, lig uh, ligation of intersphincteric fistula tract. Okay, ligation of the into intersphincteric fistula tract. Okay, the fistula is identified very early, subcutaneously, 
okay and then it is hooked out and then and it's then tied at either ends both the ends are tied with the external and the internal opening and then the track is removed okay but this diagram shows you this is a normal one with the fistula track here so you pass a seat on here or oh, sorry you open ex expose the sphincter in the intersphinteric region and then tie up the opening inner opening and the external opening and then you excise the, the track that you between the ligations this is how a lift is performed okay anus is dilated the submucous incision is made and is extended between the interspinteric region to expose the tract, the fistula tract, as it opens into the anal canal here. Okay. Then this incision, you look for the interspinteric tract here, which enters into the anal canal. Then this fistula tract is ligated at the outer surface of the inner sphincter okay, here and then the these two communications with the inner canal are blocked obliterated and the distal tract is curated out to cause it to fibros then the wound is closed so this is how a lift is done ligation of inter Sphinteric fistula tract. The next newly available treatment for fistula and ano is the biostatic prosthetic plug, where a mesh plug is placed into the fistula tract, okay, from the lumen of the anal canal. It is put out and it is placed in the fistula tract here, and it comes with a small application applicator set. Okay, with a funnel shape uh, mesh plug, it's available here. Its in internal orifice is identified, and then it is threaded through and pulled out here. Okay, so this is the bioprosthetic mesh plug, which is usually made from animal sources. Here, this is how it is. This is the spinter muscles. This is the lumen of the inner, inner side. So the plug or mesh is plugged into the hole of the fistula and then it's pulled out to the until the surface of the fistula at the skin. Okay, using the given using plug apparatus. So here you put it inside, you pull it through, pull the whole thing down. Okay, and then until it fills the fistula tract. So, and this bioprosthetic uh, mesh will cause sealing of the and plucking and sealing of the fistula tract. So the important thing is the anal fistula plug, the sphincter sparing mechanism. That's a very important thing. It's a bioprosthetic plug, usually obtained from animal sources. The internal opening must be identified to insert the plug. Okay, so the internal opening must be identified to insert the plug. And then it goes from mucosa, it's pulled right until the terminal end or external or terminal end of the fistula. The advancements in endoscopic techniques have brought a new form of treatment to fistula in ANO as well. Okay, this is known as the WAFT treatment, which is the video assisted anal fistula treatment. Okay, this is the endoscopic ablation, coagulation and sealing by using thermal or heat methods. Okay, it consists of a scope, video scope, which is known as a fistuloscope, which is inserted into the fistula and the in internal 
anatomy is then studied. Following this, okay, the heat therapy is used to coagulate and occlude or seal this fistula tract, causing long term healing and obliteration of these tracts. Next, we come to the risks or complications of anal fistula surgery. Like any other treatment, treatment of anal fistula also carries a number of risks or complications. The main among them are infection and abscess formation, which may require cause of antibiotics and analgesics. Bleeding is another common cause from the raw areas of the tract with this excise. Recurrence of the fistula is far by the most common complication or risk and the fistula can sometimes recur despite repeated surgeries. Bowel incontinence is a, another complication and this is a potential risk with the types, different, uh, the high types of anal fistula. Although severe incontinence is rare, every effort must be made to prevent it by using sphincter sparing type of minimally invasive surgery. The level of risk will depend on things like whether your fistula is where your fistula is located and the specific procedures that you have ready for them. So in this uh, view, short, short session, I've covered on fistula and ano, I've covered the definition, pathophysiology, types and classification of perianal fistulas, Goodsall's law or the Goodsall's rule, investigations for fistulas and the principles of treatment. We now come to the end of today's lecture on perianal abscess. I hope my short lecture will have given you some highlights into the pathogenesis, the causes and the management of this common condition among adults. Till I see you again in another lecture. Thank you.